Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Pits of Metal Cast. This is your host, Dave. I got along with me drummer Robert Garvin from uh, the old, old school metal band, Serious Uncle. How you doing, Robert? I'm doing really well. Thank you. Founded in 1972 in California. What city? Oh, uh, Ventura. Ooh, I've been there. I like it. Yeah, no, it's cool. We recently had some problems uh, in December. There's a big fire, the biggest fire. In yeah, California I know the, the wild the entire city though. The it took the whole entire city. Uh, almost the entire city got burned down. Uh, with a mile of my house, 500 houses burned, and uh, then there was a giant mudslide that was a little bit farther up the coast. But uh, 20 people got killed when all the mud came down the hill uh, from the fire. Anyway, it's raining right now, which is good because it hasn't rained here for eight years at least. Mm-hmm. At least, at least I was watching the whole, the whole Cali fires. It all started for the homeless guy started the fire. That's what uh, I heard, uh, huh? That's what that's what they're saying. But my sister's house burned down uh, in mm-hmm. Ohio, a city near us. And I think what really happened there was some really high wind and some of the electric wires. Mm-hmm. Uh, broke and they got in, into the trees and started the fire and with the wind blowing so hard then it just carried uh, you know my sister was right here and we looked up right above us on the hillside all the houses were burning while we were sitting here watching them it was really crazy That's, uh, oh my god I'd be, I'd be scared shitless which goes back to why I'm in a doom band <laughs> continue so now, Robert, when this band was started in seventy two, who was actually who actually decided to start this band? Well, uh, uh, we were in like seventh grade. You know, we were just out of sixth grade out of elementary school, and uh, I had a good friend, Greg, who still was in the band, still like the reunion band, and he was uh, kind of like my music mentor, and he was playing guitar. And he kind of turned me on to my first original, uh, you know, heavy bands that I ever listened to. And uh, I remember I was listening to some really weird stuff. You know, uh, we were joking about the other day, uh, like uh, the Guess Who, they had a song, No Time Left for You, stuff like that. And Greg comes to school and he has Mountain's first album, Climbing, and he goes, he goes man, don't listen to that junk. He goes, you got to listen to this band. And so, you know, down through the years, he turned me on to all sorts of new music, and he's actually the person that turned me on to uh, uh, science fiction fantasy stuff, and uh, he got me into reading Conan and Elric and all that kind of stuff. Uh, anyway, so we were uh, we were in an advanced English class where they, uh, the assignment was to read The Lord of the Rings, and... Uh, that's kind of where we got the name for our band. And we had a buddy, Jerry, who was in the same year as us, who was playing guitar also, too. So even though Greg was the guitarist, he, he got a bass uh, guitar, and I bought a drum set, and we started the band. Wow. So did you think the band would go all the way to 2018? <laughs> well, uh, actually, we had a big break in between, but, you know, the first couple of years, you know, was... You know, we were formative, we were young kids and stuff, but by the time we re- reached high school, we were actually, you know, writing some really good music, and we were really happy with the way things were going, and, you know, at one point, you know, I think everyone in the band really thought, you know, something was going to happen, and, you know, a lot of bands around us made it big, I mean, it's no secret, uh, the first album that we were ever on was Metal Blade, uh, well, not the first one, because we put out our, our, our first album, but the, the album that we were on, uh, a compilation album was the Metal Massacre One, and uh, you know Metallic was on that, and we played a bunch of times with Rat, and uh, the guys in Mile Decree used to come to all our shows and stuff. And you know, so, I mean, uh, we were buddies with Rush before they ever made it big, and you can look on our Instagram site pictures of us hanging out with Ronnie James Dio and the guys in Iron Maiden and stuff. So I mean, we were actually friends with a lot of guys that actually came. Big. And famous, and we mm-hmm. kind of thought that we were in that same mode, but kind of what happened was all the speed metal stuff came about, and, uh, you know, the hair metal stuff was going on, and we were always traditionally like uh, Black Sabbath Deep Purple, kind of like a hard rock band, 
and it seemed like we were always uh, a day late. You know, we were either early or, you know, before or ahead of our time or behind the time. Uh, but we were kind of stuck with just kind of doing what we wanted to do, you know, and I think we thought that, and I, I obviously it's still true today that, you know, real hard rock or heavy metal is always going to be around. And we were kind of mystified at all these weird, you know, these uh, kind of genres that were popping up, and we expected it just to stay, you know, all the same. If that makes any sense. Yeah, you guys became like a big coach underground band. Well, yeah, we did, uh, last year after the band got back together, we did a, uh, a, a radio interview with one of the stations in Texas at a college, and they had another band on there, and they said, do you have any advice for the band? You know, like, you know, uh, since you guys are famous or what have you, right? You know, and Tamar Singer said, well, you need to break up for 25 years, and then that, 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 that should be your uh, game plan. And I guess it works for us. Oh, I'm on I'm, I'm always joking with the guys in the band. I wish, you know, this would have happened earlier because we would have been a little bit younger and had a little bit more energy to do this kind of stuff. But, you know, like they're saying, well, it, it wouldn't have happened then. And maybe they were right, so. Hold on, hold on. I'm on your Instagram page, which I've been following you guys for a while. Anyways, um, I'm looking at the Bruce Dickinson photo with him and his short shorts, like the Daisy Duke shorts. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to say something about that because it was, it was kind of funny, but, I mean, at one point back in the olden days, I even had a pair of shorts that were kind of like that. Who uh, got, wait, who got short shorts? Bruce Dickinson got bro- short shorts. <laughs> But the difference between us and them, they also have a 747 jet plane. <laughs> I know, I seen that plane. Oh my god, I was so I was so crazy. And Bruce flies the plane. If you look at that picture, there's another funny story to that. What? Uh, well, our photographer was actually doing a bunch of uh, photo shoots for our mate. Okay. And that was one of the reasons we were there with him, because uh, he was our photographer too. Uh, Greg Hazard. Yeah. Uh, did a bunch of really great stuff for a lot of different bands. Anyway, uh, there was another guy that we were friends with. He had a magazine, Heavy Metal Times, and Tim's holding yeah. one, and Bruce is holding one too. And if you see like, the one he's holding has the Sir Thunga logo on the back, but he's got it upside down. So it's like, obviously he's not reading the magazine because he's holding it. And I can't remember whether he did that as a joke or... Uh, yeah, he, he did. He did. I, I see it. But it was still kind of, and that was kind of a cool magazine. It was out for a while, and I think that guy was from Texas, too. Uh, his name slips to me right now, but he was kind of like a good friend, and he actually drove out from Texas with a bunch of his buddies uh, in a van, and they came over to our band room and, and heard us play, and, you know, and they did a bunch of articles on the band. So, uh, you know, we seemed to, we never had any fans locally in our hometown. I mean, we had a few. You know, we played in Los Angeles, we could get, like, two, three hundred people to come out to a show, but it always seemed like the people that were actually listening to our music were, you know, outside the country or outside our state, which was kind of ironic. Yeah. Man, I've been your fan for the longest time. Dave's like, I don't remember them. I don't remember them. I'm like, Dave, how can you not, like, remember them? Because about, like, eight years ago, we were at a CD store, and I saw your CD... Imagine this. Your CD was only 50 cents. Wow. What, which CD was uh, it? The double CD. It's the double CD. I have one of your double CDs. I have a couple of them. Well, uh, you know, recently Metal Blade came out some really good uh, reissues of Paradise Lost and, and then the one right after that, King of the Dead, which I think is our best album. I think I have both of those. Think, yeah, and, but... Uh, you know, they did them on colored vinyl, and they had posters and a 20-page colored booklet. You know, I need a vinyl. The King of the Dead one right here, it's got a video uh, from one of our shows we played at the Roxy. It was one that no one had ever seen before, and so mm-hmm. I whipped it out. You know, and they put that in there with it. Uh, and there's also a few live songs from one of our shows we did out here in California. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I was just really impressed uh and the guys in Europe, you know, Metal Blade here in the U.S. has a lot to do with it, but the guys in Europe on Metal Blade, they're real good friends of the band and very big supporters. Oh, yeah? And uh, they seem to go over the top every time they do something for us, which is pretty amazing. Do you, do you guys have any DVDs out of your old shows? Uh, no, but right now what's happening is uh, Metal Blade, 
in Europe also too is, is coming out with a live album and it's going to be a compilation I think of the three the three of the shows we did last year we played at Keep It True in mm-hmm. Germany uh, and then we also played at Up the Hammers in Athens, Greece yeah then, then we played Hammer of Doom which was also in Germany and uh, in Würzburg, Germany and uh, so they filmed all those and they're kind of putting them together to make a live album okay and you know, I'm not sure someone said they're going to have all three of the concerts in there which you know to me seems like uh, are they going to have it on DVD though is but, it, uh, but is it going to be on? It, 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 go ahead, I'm sorry. Is it going to be on DVD? Yeah, it's going to be on DVD, but also it's going to be on CD. I think it's going to be like a, you know, it's going to be a live album, uh, DVD. And I, I haven't seen actually the whole uh, format the way it's going to be done, but from what I understand, they're going to go over the top. So. Okay. I have another kind of a secret. Uh, uh, thing. It's not secret, but I mean, it's something that not a lot of people have heard yet. Uh, we're going to use another one of Michael Whalen's Elric paintings for the cover of the live album. And uh, so it's going to be off the same series of the Elric books that uh, uh, our first uh, three albums were, so, or four, four albums. Yeah, that's cool. So are there any, any plans to do a new studio album, studio album in the works? Well, we're working on material right now. There's a movie coming out, uh, a Planet of Doom, and it's an animated movie similar to the uh, the animated movie Heavy Metal that came out. It's not not connected to that in any way, except for it's an animated movie with a bunch of like the up and coming or you know kind of semi famous animated artists of our time right now. And so they've been working on that. There was a Kickstarter campaign on there to help fund it, uh, but. Uh, we talked to them about doing a song on the on the movie because we have a song, uh, Doom Planet, and the, the movie's called Planet of Doom, and so they were going to use that song for the credits, and then I think one of the other bands backed out, so they asked us to do one of the main songs in the movie, and so we're working on that right now. We're going to go in the studio to recording it uh, probably in a week or so, so we're pretty excited about that. Uh, and we've already seen a bunch. If you go online on YouTube and stuff, you can see some clips from the movie, and it's really impressive. All right, that's really neat. So now, and so anyway, the, yeah, the thing was we're going to do and that possibly put out a single with that, and then also, uh, uh, you know, we're working on new material. You know, and we don't have a scheduled date for it, but I think the the hope is that we're going to come out with, uh, you know, like uh, like a new studio album. Right. Yeah, you know, because we got a lot of we got a lot of uh, ideas and stuff. You know, one of our bands agreed that don't come out with any new material unless it's uh, it's just like your old stuff, you know. And, and so I want everyone to know that I'm fighting as hard as I can to get everything. And my goal is to kind of have like a King of the Dead part two, because to me that was our favorite, my favorite album at least. So. so. But whatever we do, I guarantee it'll be heavy. So now, Paradise Lost was the last album? Yeah, yeah. That was in 91, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, first album, uh, Frost and Fire was 81, and then King of the Dead was 84, One Foot Hell was 86, and Paradise Lost came out in 91. So this, you know, then we had Servants of Chaos, and that was kind of like a compilation album of a lot of uh, unreleased material. You know, a lot of people were critical of that, but at the time, there was never uh, any kind of uh, imagination that the band would ever get back together and do anything. And so what I wanted to do, me and Greg talked about it, he had a bunch of old tapes, and a lot of the tape was deteriorating really rapidly. So we wanted to get it uh, you know, digitized and actually you know, out before it completely went away. And it's a smart thing we did, because a, uh, you know, a lot of tape, especially the more expensive Ampex tape and everything, has just basically over the years has fallen to pieces. Man. Now you could, now you make me want to go look for a vinyl on next Friday. Oh yeah, well, uh, <coughs> I, they sent me like one of each one of the ones, and there's some really nice ones for King of the Dead and Paradise Lost. They did like you know, clear vinyl with red in it, like blood, and they had some really nice. Uh, like I said, they, everything they do in Germany like that is just really super high quality and, and very uh, impressive. 
I want a copy of the blood one. I like blood. <laughs> I like ghoul. I'll remember, see if I can try to get you one. Remember, remember when Slayer came out with the remake of, what was it, Hello 8? Dave? Yeah. The album that I got? Okay, they came out with a remake of Hello 8, and I went and bought it. Dude, there was blood all over the vinyl. Wow. I was like, it was like $39. I was like, Dave, you have the money? Dave pulled out 20 from his pocket, and I had 20, and I went and bought it. I'm like, fuck it. And that's all the money we yeah, had that day. Of, we're, we're, we're kind of excited, too, because we're playing a few shows, most of our shows, since the, we, we've... And, and I'll let you know the whole story. Uh, we have a friend here in town, uh, yeah. Jarvis, who's in Night Demon, which, of course, one of the better, uh, best new heavy metal bands coming up and coming now. And, uh... He lives in our hometown, and he'd been bugging us for years to try to get back together, and we kept saying, you know, no, we didn't want to do it. And then he, he put on a festival here in town, named after our first album, Frost and Fire, and, like, a lot of people came from all over the world and really wanted us to get back together. Oh, yeah. And um, uh, Oliver, the guy that puts on the Keep It True Festival, and Hammer of Doom in Germany came and said, hey, if you guys get back together, you guys can headline uh, my festival in Europe. And so me and Tim flew over there and checked it out, and everyone over there knew who we were, which was amazing, and they knew all our songs, and so, um, you know, we got back together, we played a bunch of shows, but almost all of them have been, you know, outside the country, but coming up, we're going to be playing in uh, Houston, and uh, we're also playing uh, in Milwaukee the next day. Yeah, so if you look, NYDM? On, look on our Facebook or on our Instagram account, you can see... The NYDM, uh, Spring Bash. And then, then what we're going to be doing, we're flying to Europe. We're going to be doing a big show in London. There's going to be a Frost and Fire in London, which is an extension of the festival that goes on here in Ventura. And then we're playing also, too, in Hamburg, Germany. And we're also playing at uh, the Big Giant Rock Art Festival in Germany. We're really excited about that. Yeah, you guys are playing Sunday at uh, NYDL Spring Bash, April 22nd. Yeah. I'm going to... I'm Gary, gonna see you and Night, Night Demon is playing and too. Night Demon too. I'm gonna see you guys. I'm so excited to see you guys. I need to get that CD autographed. So where, which show are you coming to? The Sunday, the one you guys playing. NYDL Spring Bash. Oh, hey, okay, in Milwaukee. Yeah, yeah, we live we live in Wisconsin, Illinois. Yeah, the one where where Jarvis has to do double duty that day. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, no, no. Hey, Jarvis is amazing. We just played uh, two back-to-back shows in Greece, in Athens, and Thessaloniki. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, to watch him, he plays with his band, comes off stage, you know, and he's uh, all hot and wet and everything dries off. And like five minutes later or 10, 15 minutes later, he's back on stage again with us. And, and there's kind of like a story behind that, too. Mike, our original bass player, uh, we all wanted him back in the band. And he wanted to do it too, but he kind of lives out of the state. And it was really hard for him to get together with us. And so we really didn't have an opportunity to, you know, have him in the band. And since Jarvis was the guy that talked us into reforming, and he also, you know, lives in our hometown, it just seemed obvious that he should take over the bass thing. And it's been really, really good. Plus, he, he's, he's younger than us, so he has a little bit more energy on stage. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So does he use you know, those? Does he use well, electronic? Night Demon. I don't know if you guys know this, but they just got off a tour with Extemp in uh, in Europe and Death Forever magazine. It's uh, a German magazine. The readers actually picked their uh, their new album as, as the, the the best album of 2017. So they were all excited about that. So Robert, do you have you have you ever used electronic drums? You know what? I haven't. I haven't. Uh, I used to play on a stainless steel set that uh, um, Mr. Ludwig, the Ludwig factory, gave Ludwig? me, and then I was playing on a Pearl set. I was endorsed by Pearl, and now I'm playing on a DW set that uh, uh, is oak, and it's like really, it's really loud, and it has a really good sound to it. Uh, and a DW factory is like five minutes from my house, so I have a lot of buddies over there. Uh, so I gotta. You can if you look on the Instagram account, you can see my drum set. It's pretty exciting. So let me ask you, what was your first drum set you started playing on? Oh, it was funky. It was a little. It was uh, it was gold, 
gold metal flake, kind of like gold sparkle. Okay. And it was a company called Stewart. It was a really kind of primitive drum brand way back in the olden days. But uh, that led me to, uh, then I got my next set was the Ludwig set. And then I might have had even another Ludwig set. I always went with the chrome-plated ones or what have you. And uh, one of the sets I had was kind of had a bunch of problems. And so I wrote a letter to Ludwig. And Mr. Ludwig called me up and he said, hey, he goes, I hear you're having a lot of problems with uh, your set. He goes, I want to send you out a uh, prototype of one of the ones that we just came up with. And it was a stainless steel set. I ended up playing on that pretty much the whole time I was together before the band broke up. What's funny is John Bonham played on a set like that for a while, stainless steel, and then now DW is actually making them uh, a stainless steel. But I really like the way this wood, this oak set, has a really loud and it's a full sound. So I'm pretty excited to be playing on such a nice. If you look at the pictures of it, it's, it's, it's very. It's, it's red. Really cool. Red and yeah, black. Yeah, and I got 17. I'm a Peisty artist. Uh, uh, the biggest cymbal company in the world out of Switzerland and Germany. Uh-huh. And I have a Peisty gong and I have 17 cymbals and I'm just loving it. Okay, on your on your Instagram page, I'm looking at it, there's only 350, 360 likes. Where's everybody? How come they're not liking it? Lazies. <laughs> Lazies, you need oh, more God. likes. So now, Robert... Are you talking about the crowd pictures? What I've been doing is before every show, like I'll use my phone, I'll just take a picture out of the crowd right before we go on stage. Yeah. And so those, yeah, those pictures are kind of, nothing's really happened yet. I'm just sitting up there in the dark waiting for the other guys to come on stage and I just, I'm thinking, you know, hey, I'll just take her you know, over the symbol to show well, you know what the crowd looks like in the club. Uh, I'll, I'll, me, those, I'll help you yeah, guys. Those Greek guys are crazy. They, uh, you can look on on the YouTube. They actually humming our songs louder than we are playing them. If you can believe that. I'll help you guys get more likes on your pictures. I got the like page. Don't worry, you'll get some more likes. So Robert, now when you well, when you first started drum, drum when you first started drumming on that gold drum set, how old were you when you first started drumming? So what, and I never really had any lessons. I kind of was a self-taught drummer, and that's probably why I played with such a weird style. Uh, you know, I mean, before the band broke up years ago, I took some lessons, and I've been, you know, I've been studying drums. You know, since the band got back together, I've been practicing and doing rudiments and a lot of weird stuff like that. But uh, I found the more drum lessons I took, the worse it made my playing. It, it, it changed my style. So, so what drummers inspired you back in the day? Instagram photo you got. <laughs> so now, since since you've been in this band, what's been the fondest memory that stands out to you? Uh, well, you know, actually getting back together has been pretty amazing because we played some really big shows. Once again, uh, you know, keep it true in Germany or up the hammers in Athens, Greece. You know, sold out shows. Uh, you know, everyone in the crowd. I mean, they're actually like I said, they're not humming or singing along with our lyrics, they're actually humming the song. You know, and we play pretty loud, uh, like most metal bands, right? And if I can look out for my drums and I can actually hear the crowd humming the songs louder than we're playing them on stage. And it, it kind of freaks me out, you know? It's, it's kind of a strange... So from going from no one knows who we are and we're completely unpopular to playing in front of thousands of people that actually know who we are, and uh, know all our songs. It, 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 it's very, it's, uh, it's it's very sobering, and it, it, it it's a it's a great honor to be able to actually play in front of the people that have listened to the band for so long. So why do you have seventeen symbols? 
Uh, oh, I like cymbal. Uh, now, a lot of times when we play, you know, on a lot of these shows, we're playing on backline kits. So I don't always have as many as I have here. But uh, uh, I just, I like cymbal. I like, I, I'm a metal guy. Well, you understand that. I see all your symbols. Yeah, Did, I got a gong too. I love the gong. I like hitting the gong. Did you see Lemmy and Dio too back in the day? Were you close oh, friends yeah. with them? There's a picture of Tim sitting with uh, Ronnie James Dio too. Yeah, I know. His I see wife it. was his manager, and uh, we were talking to them about managing our band also too. And I'm not really sure how that came about. Kind of a funny story, but we were on uh, mm-hmm. Enigma. We were always looking for a manager, and they said we have this guy that wants to manage you. And so we had a meeting with him, and he was an English guy. And he said he wanted us to wear lipstick and makeup and like Ew. you know women's clothing and stuff like that. Ew. And um, and we're like, no, we didn't want to do that. And the and the guys from the record company said, look, man, this guy's serious. He goes, he ought to whatever he does, you should do what he says. And if not, he doesn't want to do anything with you, right? And we said, no, you know, we're not going to do that, you know? Yeah. And uh, so the guy was not interested, and he ended up going on, he ended up being the guy that was the manager for Guns N' Roses that actually made them big, so. <laughs> well, oh well. You know what? Just because you didn't make it big like Iron Man and Slayer and shit like that, you're still big. You're still well-known worldwide. Well, I think everyone in the band's really proud of the, some of the music that we did and like I said I feel the same way uh, you know there's some really good songs on every album like I'm Alive uh, on our first album Frost and Fire all the songs on King of the Dead stuff on One Foot in Hell and Paradise Lost so I think you know we're, we're happy that we're able to actually like put out music that actually people uh, could listen to and even though we wrote it for ourselves it, it, it was an honor that people actually you know, picked up the records and actually uh, seemed to like it also too, and so that made us happy. And it's all all that matters is that you're known out there. So you guys got back together in 2015. Yeah. So after this Frost and Fire in 2015, we got back together, and um, we played pretty much for 2016, getting our, or you know getting the we had got a band room, uh, you know getting all the guys back together, you know, getting equipment and stuff like that. And then starting last year is when we started playing uh, the shows in Europe. But in 2016, we uh, played the Frost and Fire show here in Ventura. And this October, uh, Jarvis put that show on also, too, the festival. Uh, He said this is going to be the last one in Ventura, so this may be the last time we play in our hometown. So we're going to be playing uh, one of the nights of the three-day festival here in October for Frost and Fire, I think it's four. Yeah, four. So you guys are never going to play in your hometown again? Uh, well, you know what? There's not that many people here into, into the, the heavy metal stuff. Yeah. Uh, like at the show we're playing in October, we're playing the 4th of October. And uh, the other bands are headlining, Exumer, Satan, Midnight, uh, Slow Fag, Night Demon. You know, Pagan Altar, Ashbur, all these uh, bands are playing, but almost everyone that's coming to this show is going to be coming from outside the I state. See. I mean, there'll be people come up from L.A., and there will be some local people there, but the majority of people are guys from coming from out of town. Yeah. Oh. Wait, how many tattoos do you got? I'm sorry? How many tattoos do you have? Oh, I don't... That's the other funny thing is... Uh, I don't have any tattoos at all, right? I don't have a nose piercing or anything. Okay. Uh, and every show that we go to, uh, there's people have our album covers on their arm and their leg, the logos on their hands. So like I said, I posted a lot of those on uh, Instagram account too. Uh, they're pretty amazing. Especially one yeah. guy has our two skeleton logos tattooed on his hands, and it seemed like that would... Uh... And I don't know. I'm, I'm, I just... I, I never... I thought if I got a tattoo when I got older, it would change. You know, you get a tattoo of like a, a deer. You get older, it turns into a bear or something. You know, so I was. I think I was worried it would turn into something ugly later on in life. So. I got this. I I saw the picture of the skeleton tattoo with the hands. It's pretty cool. Yeah. No. No. Uh, like I said I really like them. That's why I put uh, 
I'm in charge of the Instagram account, so I post all the pictures up there. That's probably why there's more drum sets than anything else. But, uh, <laughs> but if you look through there, you'll see, in fact, halfway down through the page, uh, a friend in Greece, he has uh, some of the lyrics of our uh, song I'm Alive tattooed on the side of his chest. And that was yeah, pretty, I saw uh, that one. That's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. I told him, here's what I, every time I see someone with a tattoo of our band, I said, I hope you like the band because then you, if not, you'd have to go have it laser removed. <laughs> I, um, I got, I got a couple of band tattoos on me, Slayer and Kitty. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Well, look, I look, I really look forward to seeing you guys in Wisconsin. Oh yeah, you're going to see us. You can autograph my hand, I'll probably get it tattooed. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that club, that club has like a history to it. I mean, it's kind of like a famous, uh... Yeah. Is, is it Gar- isn't it called Garibaldi? Or? Yeah, yeah. I, I believe it's called Garibaldi. Yeah, Garibaldi's. Yeah, I, I heard it was kind of like a, it has like a famous history to it, so we're kind of excited, excited to come and play. It, the club that used to play NYD on Spring Bash was called the Metal Grill, that one had more history, but unfortunately they shut down. Yeah, no, it's, it's like I said, there's there's a big market out there for heavy metal, and unfortunately it's more popular in Europe than it is in the United States. Maybe not more popular, but it's more accessible. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, we need- I think that's why it's a good idea that all these festivals are happening because it, it gets together a lot of people that may never have met before, and also from different parts of the country they can all get together and. You know, all listen to heavy metal. You know, instead of having just to go to one club in your town, you can see, you know, maybe ten or fifteen bands from different places. And it's uh, it's been really exciting for us to do that. Uh, we played in a, a festival called Chaos Descends, which is named after one of our songs out in the forest in Germany. And there's once again, there's pictures on the uh, Instagram page of that. You tell because there's trees around, but. Uh, uh, it was just unbelievable playing outside uh, uh, at night, and you could see the stars, and it was just really cool. I bet it was. We played there with a band called Sun O, and uh, uh, they play really, really loud, and they tune down, and some of the songs only have one or two notes in them, and they come out on stage with hoods all in fog. If you've never seen them or heard them, you ought to check them out, because they're, they're pretty unique. And then we were lucky enough, uh, one of the bands I grew up listening to, Lucifer's Friend, one of my favorite bands of all time, um, back from the 70s. And they were, once again, they were one of our first influences with like Black Sabbath and Deep Purple. Uh, but the last big show we played in Germany at Hammer of Doom, we got to play with them, and that was pretty amazing. And then in uh, uh, Baltimore, we got to play with Captain Beyond, which was a band I saw open up for Black Sabbath years ago, so... It's also been cool to actually play with some of the, you know, old bands that we actually grew up listening to and get to meet the people. And it's it's, it's quite amazing uh, seeing some of these old bands that are 10 years older than us that are so good. So. That one? So now, when you got back together in uh, 2015, how, how was it coming back into, you know, like with the social media now compared to years ago? Well, you know, that, that people always ask, what's the difference between now and then? And I think the, the internet and everything is what made everything crazy. And I mean, even though the band was broke up, I spent quite a bit of time, you know, promoting the records because Metal Blade, uh, Brian Slagle, the guy that started Metal Blade, a good friend of the band, uh, just, she's been amazing. I mean, while the band was out, out of print for so many years, he, he got all the albums together and he got them re-released. And even though the band was broke up, he kept them in print quite a bit of the time. And uh, uh, you know, it just it was it was it was pretty cool that all that stuff was still out there. And so I, I kind of over the years did interviews. You know, and, and to be honest, most of them were in print magazines like uh, Krang or Sweden Rock or, or Rock Hard, like in Germany. And I uh, do an interview and they end up doing a 20 page color article on the band and so you know it, it was kind of like the only kind of promotion that was there and now that the internet's out there it's just so much easier to uh, uh, you know actually get in contact with people and and uh, you know meet people who have, have liked 
similar likes. Uh, although, you know, I, I, as, as cool as the internet is still, I still think, though, uh, you know, it's just people like word of mouth getting together and, like, they're coming out to these festivals. I mean, that's where all the stuff's happening. And even though people hear about it from Facebook or Instagram or what have you, I think, you know, once again, when you're, you know, meet someone in real life, you get to shake someone's hand and you get to see them, you know, it's, it's, it's a far more satisfying experience than touching someone through the Internet. Um, when, when you get off the phone with us in an interview, make sure you follow me on Instagram because I'm going to tag you up in a lot of photos. Perfect. I promise I will. Okay. If you're not following me and already. I, I, and I really look forward to seeing you guys in uh, Milwaukee. I've never been to Wisconsin, so I'm all excited. Oh, yeah. You're, oh, you're going to love it. It's crazy in Wisconsin. There's a lot of metalheads in Wisconsin. And I hope there's cheese. I like cheese. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's Mars Cheese Castle. you got to go check out that place. Yeah, you should go to Mars Cheese Castle in Wisconsin. That's a good place to go to. They they rebuilt it and everything. It's pretty cool. It's bigger now. I will now. certainly try. Uh, you know, most of these shows, like we have a quick turnaround. We're playing the night before in Houston. I actually have relatives that live in Houston. And they said, can we come see you? And I said, well, like, it counts for like six hours. <laughs> but, uh, you know, then we fly to Milwaukee, and I think after we play, we might get on the plane and fly home the next morning. So, But any time that I have there, I'm certainly going to want to look around and see what's going on. And once again, I'd like to really thank you guys for uh, giving me this opportunity to talk with you. And actually, uh, I know you're talking to Jarvis next. Yeah. Uh, so when you do tell him, I said hello, because he's been... If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be talking right now. The band would never got back together. And all the stuff that's happened for our band has been because of that gentleman right there. And what we say about him, he's all metal all the time. Now, what type of metal would you consider yourself as? Uh, you know, we call it heavy metal. And I still think of it, to me, heavy metal is you have, like, drums, you have guitar, you have a singer that's screaming, you know, you got slashing guitar, you got pumping bass, pounding drums. No, I mean, you can call it hard rock, heavy metal, whatever you want to call it, doom metal, death metal. I mean, there's so many names for stuff. Uh, people have said that we're the grandfathers of doom metal. I'm not sure whether that's true or not. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I think hard rock or heavy metal, you know, definitely heavy. That's for sure. Yeah, I saw, I saw them where they called you guys early doom metal, power metal. Yeah, you know, I don't know any of that. I'm, I, like I said, to me it's a compliment just to even be mentioned. So uh, just the fact that someone mentions our band's name makes me feel proud. So Okay, I'm going to tag you Grandfathers of Doom Metal. <laughs> Sweet. So, sometimes I look at your band photos, you kind of remind me of uh, Filthy Animal Taylor from, from Motorhead. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. Hey, he was a good drummer. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. There's lots. What I found out from playing with all these other bands, every drummer seems like they're better than the next drummer. I mean, there's so many good drummers out there. I, I, I always think that, uh, you know, there's more drummers than there are anyone else out there, to be honest, you know, in bands. Uh, but anyway, it keeps me, keeps me having to try harder. So so currently right now, out there today, who do you think are, who do you consider good drummers? Well, you know what, I guess it goes back to my original drummers that I listen to, because I mean, I still I still think those are some of the better ones uh, that I've seen. But you know, there's a whole crop of new drummers. Uh, I mean, there's a guy playing with Black Sabbath after Bill Ward, you know, wasn't feeling well, and so the drummer for uh, Black Sabbath, I saw him, that guy's like amazing. Uh, but then also, too, Deep Purple played at our local fair last year, or the year before last. I went and saw Ian Pace, and I just I couldn't believe it. And uh, once again, I think he's maybe five or ten years older than me, and I was just blown away by how good, good he is. So, uh, 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 Dusty Squire, the drummer in Night Demon. I mean, oh, my God. Every time we play with them, uh, you know, all the guys in the band, we stand off to the side of the stage and watch the band play, and... I don't know, I think Night Demon is one of the best new bands out there. And uh, once again, if you're looking for a heavy, hard drummer, uh, Dusty's the guy. Matter of fact, most parts of the drum set, he always breaks. He breaks the snare rim, and he breaks the foot pedals, and he's just a, he's a crazy, 
I call him a manimal. That's my, my name for him. Um, what's your favorite food? Uh, well, you know, we're here in California, so, uh, pretty much I eat Mexican food, like maybe six nights a week. Enchiladas, tostadas, chilarinos, guacamole, burritos, margaritas. <laughs> burritos? <laughs> yeah, and, it, and they all have cheese in them. <laughs> so you may, mostly, basically, you love cheese. Yeah, no. Also, too, I love pizza. Yes, she's on it, too. It's all Wisconsin <laughs> cheese. Oh, yeah. Wisconsin has all types of cheese you'll be picking out on. Oh, I know. I know. Mm-hmm. I'm not joking about it. I know how great you guys are, so I'm all excited about coming out there. Okay, what's your favorite drink? Uh, alcohol or non-alcoholic? Well, you know what? I drank so much in my life. I'm not drinking. So, what's your favorite non-alcoholic beverage? Well, no, I was going to say, I still, margaritas are my favorite drink. Uh, I'm not drinking as much alcohol as I used to. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, I love, uh, I love margaritas. That's probably my favorite drink of my whole life. Okay. Wash it down Mexican food and margarita. You wash down Mexican food and margarita, I understand. <laughs> yeah, or beer. You know, I can drink beer with Mexican food. That's... <laughs> what's your favorite beer? You know, so many good beers we had in Germany. Uh, I don't know. I still like, uh, I like a Mexican beer like Dos Equis. You know, that's like, you know, out here uh, where we live in California, like just in our little town, like there's 15 different breweries. So every other place now is a brewery. And it's amazing. You know, it's actually, it's impossible to even keep up with all the different, you know, like microbreweries that are around. Uh, but I, I still kind of like, uh, you know, I like old, old-fashioned old beer, like the Dos Equis. There's also, I like Italian stuff. There's a beer called uh, 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 Peroni. Uh, good Italian beer. And I know you guys have a lot of beer in Milwaukee, too. So. Yeah, Wisconsin brewed beer. Yeah. yeah. And um, my favorite is Corona. Yeah, and I'm sorry, I should have said a Wisconsin beer. But I, I'm sure we'll have a bunch when we're out there. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, who are your top favorite bands of a lifetime? Five. Wow. You know, that once again, that's hard. But I'm going to probably go back to the same bands I mentioned earlier. I still love Mountain. I mean, I know they've been broken up for years. But uh, uh, I saw them so many times. And they were just so loud and so heavy. Uh, mm-hmm. And then Black Sabbath, I saw them... Uh, many times and I just was every time I saw him I was impressed I was always kind of freaked out by Ozzy because he seemed like he didn't really fit with the band you know look, looks wise but uh, you know Tony Elmy Bill Ward Ezer Butler matter of fact they played in our hometown and we got to hang out with them backstage uh, that's when Ronnie James Dio was in the band mm-hmm. but it was kind of cool we got to hang out with them all afternoon once, uh, when they were playing here locally and uh you know, Deep Purple, always loved them. I once, matter of fact, I had, a, there was a club here in L.A. called the Starwood, and we were playing there, and um, they had an upstairs for VIPs, and I was up there, and Richie Black was up there, and so I sat there and uh, had a, a Hanukkah with him once. This was many years ago. And uh, I remember he had a velvet jacket on, so the next day I went out and bought a velvet blazer so I could be like, <laughs> be like Richie Black. Oh, yeah. So... So, to, any last words to finish out the show with? Oh, yeah. I got to add Thin Lizzy. They're one of my favorite bands, too. Okay. But you have any last words? Oh, yeah, no. My last words would be, once again, thank you for uh, allowing me to speak with you guys and uh, okay. get the message out. Uh, Sir Thungle, you know, we have, like, a long history that's pretty uh, amazing, and also there's some colorful stories to it. And I hope that if anyone gets a chance, they'll come out to see the band because, you know, we're getting older and who knows how much longer we can stay together. But, uh, you know, any one of the shows that we play is going to be amazing. And uh, I think anyone that comes out, they won't be disappointed. No, well, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of people coming out to the show. Well, thank you for your time, okay? Okay, thank you. And you guys take care. Say hello to Jarvis. Right. Hold on. Stand on the phone for a sec. Okay, keep rocking.